Hi, welcome to rule of acquisition number 27. This is the smarter monkey fallacy. This is the is this version of the smarter monkey fallacy supersedes all other previous versions printed on my website or on the YouTube channel. And the 27th rule of acquisition says a false belief in the smarter monkey is why no one will say anything ever. And 27A when will then be now? Forever. I'll explain what that means. 27B, there is no statute of limitation on human stupidity. So this starts off because when I tell people that oh, I believe there are serious flaws and many scientific theories that are presently in use, here is what immediately flashes into their mind and or it may come right out of their mouth. Well, if what you are saying can't be true because someone would have said something by now. Huh. This is the most devastating words in science. And I'm going to go into them in detail, why these are the most devastating words in science. This is what I call the smarter monkey fallacy. It has two assumptions. The first assumption is that there's a smarter monkey out there that's willing to speak up. Okay, it's a very good possibility that there exists one or more people that are smarter than you and I in a given field. I mean, that's, that's a statistical probability. The probability that these smarter monkeys have experienced, experienced the same problems is also a good bet. The question is, are they willing to speak up? Let me turn the tables. Suppose you, you, were working on a complex problem involving an application of theory of relativity. And I'm just using the theory of relativity as an example. Pick any, one, any theory, it doesn't matter. And let's say you're stumped because measured data and theory don't agree. So what does a sane, rational person do? They invoke the smarter monkey fallacy. You will rationalize that the theory must be correct because somebody ostensibly smarter than you would have said something by now. And so you pound at the problem. And the most prevalent course of action that sane, rational people will take so assume there was something wrong with the measurement of the data or the premise of, of, the, of the theory or the thing you were trying to check. Now you could rerun the experiment and collect the data, but what if it, the experiment costs tens of millions of dollars? What if the experiment requires you to shoot another satellite into the orbit around Jupiter to measure this? Are you going to go ask for money because you fucked it up? You messed it up? Well, you can't. You're probably not going to ask for money. You're going to have to kind of find some way to figure out what's wrong with the data and match the data because there's no way are you going to be able to ask for more money, especially in this climate of economy, to get that experiment repeated. And then what is your credibility going to look like if you can't form a experiment properly to begin with? Are they going to give you more money? If you can't do it right the first time, what makes you think we're going to do it right the second time? And so your credibility is on the line. So, you're going to come up with the unicorn defense. You're going to find a way to either say, feel confident that the data was good or just say the data was good, you know, because you need to save face in this climate that we're in in science. And so the next most prevailing course of action is to explain the discrepancy away with fairy tales involving generous applications of unicorn crap. Dark matter, dark energy, travel, charges traveling back from the future, holographic projectors situated at the edge of the universe. Yes, this is one of the things being proposed right now by those people that are writing Discovery Channel specials, that are the leading scientists that are the subject of Discovery Channel specials. Okay. But on the very odd chance you honestly feel there may be something wrong with relativity, you will still say nothing. The earnest belief that there are smarter monkeys, smarter monkeys than you working in the field will stifle you in two ways. Because one, if you are wrong, which it could happen, you know, you're, you're always going to have self-doubt, and you come out with this, they're going to crucify you, and you will lose credibility to the point where the university that's hiring you may decide, well, we're not going to keep you on anymore because you're staying on our, our credibility as a university. So you're probably going to get fired. And you will certainly not be able to get grants for any future projects. Your career is over. And so that's going to make you think very carefully about coming forward. And because of one, 
you're going to rationalize this away and say, you know what, I'm going to let the smarter monkeys deal with this. Um, you know, you know, after all, they will say something, won't they? I don't think so, because everybody out there believes there's somebody smarter than them in the field, and statistically, they're probably correct. So everyone's going to defer to the smarter monkey. And no one's going to come forward with potential flaws in the theory of relativity. And because no one's coming forward with flaws in relativity, everybody thinks relativity is honky-dory. And I'm saying relativity as the example. It could be any scientific theory. But if you're insane, kind of like me, and assume you're crazy enough to speak up and have isolated your income for potential retribution, you will still not get any traction for the same reason. Because scientists will automatically assume you are wrong even without looking at your work. Because after all, the smarter monkeys would have said something by now. You can't possibly be right. And for the laymen out there who have grown up watching scientific shows on the Discovery Channel about the theory that you're talking about, with all the smart professor monkeys talking about relativity as if it were some foregone conclusion, are going to wonder, why now? Why didn't somebody notice this many years ago? They're going to inv invoke the smarter monkey defense as well. So, the 27th rule of acquisition is the false belief in the smarter monkey is why no one will say anything ever. It is one of the most damaging fallacies to scientific advancement. It actually suppresses exploitation of scientific anomalies, which are the main avenue of scientific advancement. As Niels Bohr once said, how wonderful we have obtained a paradox. Now we have some hope of making progress. And the belief in the smarter monkey, the, uh, the belief in the existence of the smarter monkey allows intelligent people to sit on their behind believing that, well, the smarter monkey will take care of it and I don't have to get involved. It's someone else's problem. Okay, there is another problem with the, this is the second assumption that people make with the smarter monkey fallacy. That there's an implied statute of limitations when they say, gee, somebody would have said something by now. Meaning, if it hasn't happened by now, well, you know. And then there, I, when I came up with, I thought of the movie Spaceballs, and there's a really funny exchange. Uh, when will then be now? You can look it up on YouTube. It's really funny. And let me tell you why there is no statute of limitations. Because fire was used effectively for 20,000 years to heat one's home, cook food, burn down the homes and crops of our enemies, in spite of the fact that we had the wrong model of it. We thought it was an element for over 20,000 years. We had the wrong model. Nobody questioned it because they were able to put fire to great use. So the model must be right. Why question it if it's working? This is what I call lactose intolerance. We should not think that a theory is ultimately true, only that no counterexample has yet been found. And so we go back to space balls. When will then be now? And the answer is forever. Counterexamples are probably occurring all the time. But there are so many counter incentives, some mentioned in this presentation, which suppress their exposure. It could also be that the technology developed to expose these counterexamples hasn't been developed yet. And that's more along the lines of what Emir Lakatos was saying. Okay, so there's no statute of limitations on human stupidity. Okay, so conclusion. It is one of the greatest fears of humankind, the fear of standing out and making a fool of yourself. The, the, the will not to get involved and the fear of change. Students will not raise a hand in class. Scientists will not speak up even if they see something. We need, we need to make it more welcome for scientists to come forward when they have found a problem and not be retributive if they made a mistake. Because in the end, we're all human. We all make mistakes. And making mistakes is the best way to learn. It really is. That's how you learn to walk. You're not born knowing how to walk. You learned how to walk by falling on your tiny little butt a number of times and realizing, ow, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. And that's sometimes how science progresses. We should not have this arrogance to think that we know everything. And there's another famous quote by a guy by the name of Dr. David Disney. I believe that's his name. He said that the 
the illusion that we think we know what we're doing is the greatest obstacle to science. Thank you very much. This was the 27th rule of acquisition, the smarter monkey fallacy. Thank you very much.